Welcome to this webinar. It's about analytics in healthcare, and it's two parts. So I start with part number one. How could we decrease the queue in healthcare? What if you could use statistical information to get knowledge that helps you to take decisions like this example and get you to know who to treat first? And I will show that for you later in the, de in the demo in part two. And this is the agenda for these two parts. And I will start to tell you about how one organization has used our solution, and that is the you know, Diabetes Center. The background is that it's a medical research institution in Denmark, and they focus on biomedical research into the long-term complication of type 1 and type 2 diabetes. And uh, they are focused on patient care, and they have a lot of patients, and the research team publishes up to 100 papers each year. And the challenge they had was to study diabetes over time to discover which parts of the body is affected of the diabetes. And uh, that's lots of data. And they needed to organize clinical studies of hundreds of patients that take place over a number of years. So it was very complex with all these data over the years. So the solution was that they needed a statistical tool to take care of all the data and chose SPSS because they found it easy to use. And they have told us that they didn't have any professional statisticians when they started to use SPSS. The users are mainly medical doctors and academics. Even without much training, they have learned quickly how to perform quite sophisticated analysis. And I will later show you one more advanced analysis in a demo, and that is logistic regression. And they have found out factors that has been important to the disease, and they have also found out how to give the best treatment. And they also get confidence in published researches. And there is a Professor Rossing, he's the head of the research center, and says following, the ability to handle and combine data sets from different cohorts of patients in SPSS is very valuable. We always, always mention in our publications that we use SPSS, and this choice of tools has never been questioned by the reviewers. We know we can trust the tool to deliver the correct results. So, I will now go through a health example and tell you how you can perform a study and also do a small demo in the statistical tool. And I will show you how to use it and how to understand the results and how you can use the results for the future, like predict the risk for disease. And in this scenario, I would try to find out which people are the most sick patients. So I will talk about five steps in the process that I hope you can be inspired of. Maybe you can start using some steps or maybe all five steps. Everything starts with the collecting of your patients. Then it continues to something that many things are very time consuming, but most of the people understand that this is a very important step to clean data. When it's clean, you can start investigate your data and test why people are sick. You can do statistics tests to prove the results. Maybe the age is important to explain why people get sick, but then you can get in one step further and combine different information, for example, age and gender, and build models that can be used to predict the future, and I will also show this. Then it's good to show the results, maybe take some actions from the findings, and in the end save what you have done in the documentation. And if you save your command like graph test models, you can also reduce the commands. So let's start with the first step to collect data. But 
how many patients do I need to collect for my study if I'm going to make interviews, for example, and draw some conclusion that is correct conclusions statistically. For that, I really need to have enough number of patients so I can get correct conclusions. But I don't want them too many because that is not ethical and it also costs more. We have a tool that can help you finding out how many you need to collect for your study. So the benefits are the cost savings and more correct results when you have the right number of people in your data. Then we have some we have come to the parts that many spend seventy percent of their study to it is to clean data, fix data, change data and so on. And this step is where the two, where the whole history of SPS starts. The, re the researcher who created SPS in 1968, Norm and I, he needed a tool to help him to prepare data. So he created SPS for this purpose. And during all these 45 years, this has been an important part to make as easy and effective as possible for the SPS users. So what do I mean by preparing data? It can be a lot, but here are some examples. If data is incorrect, the results will be incorrect. So you need help to find incorrect data. Uh, and also maybe if you have some data that is a little bit outliers or extreme values, it's important to know about that. And if you have incorrect data, you have to fix these errors. And maybe you also have to investigate if you have any missing values if in the data. That could be a problem. So, for example, if there are more males that refuse to answer a special question compared to females, that can be a problem. So here is an example how it looks like when SPS has found out errors in data and they have sorted out five patients in the beginning of the list that includes errors. And we can see from my red circles that there is wrong codes. We have codes three in the gender variable where only one and two could be as, uh, as code is possible. And then we have the age 2 to 8. That must be wrong. Sometimes it's an extreme value, but it could be correct. So then you have to keep this value, but you have to know about this and have it in the mind when you do analysis. So the value of getting fast help to find errors and fix them is that you can get correct results. But the big value is also that you save a lot of time as this is easy and fast to use. So now to my study again. I would like to know the reason why some patients are sick. So I start doing statistics and also do some tests to prove in a report why is statistics so important for a study. I will try to explain for you why you need to go a little bit deeper into your data and not stay at the first level like in this example. Here we have only one level, gender. And we can see that it seems not to be any differences between male and female if we compare the persons in these two groups. So among male, 20% are dement, and among females, also 20% are dement. So if we continue with another level, and put in family in the table. If a close family member like parents has got dementia, then it seems to be more dementia among the females. Then we have 25%, but among the males with the same family situation, it's just 11%. So here we have a difference that we couldn't see if we stayed at just one level in the, in the table one. Finally, if we stop at three levels, but we don't have to stop here. You can continue with more levels than we can see here. But um, if we select only the female with dementia and family, then we can see that there is 40%. That's the highest number. If they have got the bad MMT results, that is a scoring a test in cognitive function. So 
this is the this is an example from the menus. So if you and uh, it's just from the analyze commands that you can do the descriptive statistics and tables, but you can also do a lot of statistical tests. And uh, it depends a little how much you need. Maybe you just do some basic statistics, then we have modules for that. If you need to prove the results you've just found out in the tables, then you have to do statistical tests. And that's something that you can find here. And there is a lot of tests to choose between, but you can get help in the help menu to find out which is the best test. And we also have trainings. And uh, in the next part, too, you will see a demo from the program. And welcome back.